Hey guys, it's San and welcome back to the Bulba Squad. So today we're going to be talking about why it is stupid to buy a set at release for investing. So thank you. I'm glad to be back guys. It's up to you guys. It seems like I was here all along. I was actually off for about two weeks. I just pre-recorded some stuff. And now it finally getting into the spin of things and I wanted to come in with a fun little spicy take video. Yes, I believe it is stupid to purchase a set at release for investing. Does this expand to uh, special special sets and uh, what would it be called? These special boxes like the evolutions right here? It's dependent. I will go into some exceptions, see how this works, alright? But for the most part, I do believe it is stupid to purchase a set at release for investing purposes. The reason I say this is because it's a lose-lose situation. I really wanted to target this because I see that more the new sets are going lower and lower simply because there's so much supply combined with all of the abundant negativity and just all these little variables coming together at once. So seeing that, I wanted to just talk about this specifically. The reason I think it's stupid is it's a lose-lose scenario all around. You're not going to win in this situation because, let's see, my, my friend Swami, he's the one who actually made me consider this. So I don't know if he's ever going to come back to YouTube, but if you join my Discord, you can talk with him there. But back to what I was saying. Essentially, let's say I purchase a case at the beginning. We're going to say $500 for the case. That is what the golden price was back in the day. It was what people were very used to. $500. Now, a set, typically, if, you, if you're average or above average, it would drift towards $600 for the case out of rotation. Just because it's not really going to appreciate. Let's say, theoretically, price does appreciate, right? It goes to 120 130 140 Well, the set's in rotation. You and me know the rules. It's, it's literally, you know the rules and so do I. It's in rotation, price is appreciating, it can be reprinted. So if it there's any sizable appreciation, it's very likely that Pokemon will reprint it, especially given their track record at this point in time. And the higher the price goes, well, the more likely they're going to reprint it, so you either have to move the product and hope you can actually make margins on it at that point in time and then buy it back in at, at the lower price, or you're just going to write it down. And that's why I see it as a net negative. If you do know how to time it, because you are able to, I'm not going to lie, because you can use the rat system I proposed a long time ago combined with, uh, combined with just the spider system, and you'll get an idea of, all right, will this be reprinted? Will it not? What do I feel? And then make a play off of that. Obviously, you're going to be wrong, but it's, it's something, okay? It's a lot more work than what I propose, which is just buying out of rotation. Now, the other loose scenario, the price doesn't appreciate. It either stays where it is or it crashes, which is very possible, especially in our current climate. If that happens, well, then it means there was a failure in the product somewhere along the way, in which case it's going to take time for those sentiments to change and then people to start perceiving it differently. Perfect example, Steam Siege. Very negative sentiments took way past out of rotation for sentiments to change and it did start to appreciate. Yes, absolutely, it was due to 2020, but at the end of the day, the sentiments did change, so that was a factor. Other than that, the reason I propose out of rotation is once we're out of that rotational period, the risk of a reprint is negligible. It's exactly like going to work. Obviously, there's a risk in me going to work. I could end up in a car crash, someone could die, you could, let's say your t car's total, just a lot of things could go wrong along the way, even tickets. But the reward outweighs the risk in that I'm getting paid, I'm going to keep that job, so therefore I'm going to undertake this risk. Out of rotation is the same thing. At that point in time, historically, Pokemon doesn't really reprint stuff. Yes, we've had maybe two situations that seem like they are reprints or possible repackages, whatever you want to call them. But two situations out of all of the sets, that's a negligible risk by comparison to the upside. In that situation, your risk is so much more controlled than if you purchase at release. Because if you just purchase at release, you have massive risk. You don't know how the market's going to absorb it. You don't know how it's going to appreciate slash up. Prices are going to drop because of reprints. You don't know what will happen. Overall, 
there's way less risk at that point in time if you go in it during the out of rotational period. Yeah, it's boring, I get that, because you want the new shiny thing, but by giving that up and actually being more focused, it'll make you a better investor in the long term. Then, once we're in that rotational period, because supply is supposedly finite at this point in time, obviously there's a ton of it still, but supposedly finite, then theoretically the odds of it appreciating at the rate that it did in rotation or faster are higher. Because theoretically, within that rotational period, we know supply is practically infinite. Theoretically, let's say it appreciates at a rate of 10% annually, just simple interest. Well, if it did that, while there was more supply coming in, wouldn't it stand to reason that once there's no more supply coming in, it'll keep doing that or go faster? Because supply stays still, and if demand was eroding at it, even during while the supply was coming in, theoretically, the prices should move. Just, I know there's more to it than that, but you see my rationale. That basic rationale does help support my arguments. If, and so that's all I really got for you guys today. I wanted to debunk this idea of buying at release is a smart idea, or even close to release. Even if it's within the first year, I would argue it is kind of stupid. Even at this price point where we're at, where boxes are really cheap, I would argue it is possibly stupid. Just because there's better opportunities. And that, at the end of the day, if you're on this channel, it's because you're trying to optimize your money. Obviously, the stock market and all that can beat it, or usually, because it's more consistent. But looking within the scope of Pokemon, there are possibly better options at the moment, especially with singles, such as what Jake with Pokenomics has spoken about. Whereas sealed product, I feel, is not in the same situation. So, that's all I got for you guys today. Tell me, what did you guys think about this approach? Do you agree? Do you disagree? If you think that maybe there's a sweet spot between one to two years, tell me. Or maybe you do have a justification for why you should purchase that release. Maybe some of you wise guys out there, or uh, not wise guys, what would be the word? Uh, hustlers out there somehow get these boxes way below that $500 price point. If so, maybe it absolutely is in in your best interest to go ahead and purchase it at release. Either way, thank you guys for watching this video. Come support us on Patreon if you really like the channel. Otherwise, subscribe, it's free, and like the video. Thank you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.